Hello, it's me, Matt Gabriel, and welcome to this spooky episode, it's not spooky at all, um, version of a video, which is me on my sofa, if you can see me, I managed to make this work, but I'm going to do what you can see in front of you, which is a 35mm point and shoot tier list. And this is a response to, well, not a response, but more inspired by a negative feedback. Um, and George did a video where he did a general, all of his cameras, medium format, SLR, 35mm, point and shoot 35mm. And yeah, I know, I know a bit about 35mm SLRs, but my area of expertise, so to speak, is the point and shoot field so that's what i'm going to talk about i mean you can see already i mean there's some cameras here there's not a load of cameras this isn't going to be for 30 minutes long hopefully um but could be we'll find out you'll know because uh, you will be able to see but i won't and this is a load of gubbins so let's get straight into it um these are some cameras that i have mainly used but not all of them i haven't used but i know what they're like as cameras so i feel like i can make a solid judgment um they're not all premium there are some premium there's a lot of noise going on outside i apologize some people are playing with scaffolding i don't know what they're doing it's uh, 20 to 10 at night time so silly people um but some of them are a bit obscure some of them not uh, some of them are expensive, some of them are not. Um, so it's really for a broad overview, whatever you want, um, give it a try kind of thing. There'll be something for everybody, hopefully, here. Um, so I guess we should really do it in order of some kind of systematic approach to this. So let's start with the Olympus Mu 1, which I'm... Can you move this? Can you move that? Yeah, I can move that to there, but this is the one that we're going to play with first. Um, and the Olympus Mu 1 is a camera that I've owned, and I've done a video about it, and I had it for a while. Um, and it's a really good kind of entry-level uh, point-and-shoot camera in terms of you may be moving from SLR and wanted to try a point-and-shoot camera. And um, this is affordable. I mean... When I bought it, it was about £25, £30. I don't know what they're going for now. Probably more than that. Um, I would still pay for it. I mean, at the end of the day, camera's value is uh, really what you get out of it. Once you've got it, it's not really about the money that you spent, but about the experiences that you have with it. Um, so i would definitely put it as a solid b tier it's affordable it takes good photos um and i really like the camera when i used it so i mean that may change depending on how this goes but we'll put it there for the moment olympus mju2 um it's expensive it has a sharper lens it's a lot more expensive and it's a bit smaller as well um I think, yeah, it does take good photos, but the design's a little slippy. Um, if it was cheaper, I'd probably put it in B tier along with the M Mu 1, but I just don't think that the price warrants its performance, so I will put it there. Um, now, let's go to the 3D cameras. So let's start with the... Where's the N Shika eight N eight thousand Shika N eight thousand? Um, so this is these these this camera is a fun camera. It's not for everybody. It does provide a really unique look. Um, but I found that its use case was really rare. Um, I found that um I wasn't I was using it twice and then it was on the shelf. Um, but then there may be other people who use this all the time that becomes their style of shooting so it again it is based on the person I it's a toy camera it doesn't it's got focus free f8 lens something like that um but it's really about the look that it gives and i i'm actually a big fan of the 
the look that it gives. Um, and I do appreciate it. However, I don't think the price warrants, again, I'm not sure, I have literally no idea how much this camera costs, but I imagine it's very overpriced, so I'm going to put it in the C tier. Um, and then we will get to the Reto 3D, and I'm just going to put that straight in the B tier, because I feel like it's an upgraded version of the Nishika. Yes, it has one less lens, but it's cheaper, it's got a built-in flash, you can put it in your pocket, um, and you can buy it. I mean, it. you can buy it now, and I'm pretty sure you can go on the website and just buy it. So it's accessible, it's not what comes up on eBay. Um, I really enjoyed shooting it, I've still got it. Um, I hope I'll shoot it again in the future. Um, so that is a solid B tier for me. Um, let's go to the Olympus XA2, which is this one. Now this was the first ever point and shoot camera that I owned. Uh, pretty sure I've done a video on it, and if I haven't, I've got poor memory, but I love this camera. It's like a point and shoot without the electronic faff that wind advance automatically advances and makes noise. It's really good for street shooting. Um and it's affordable as well. I I probably bought it at the same price as the Mu One, thirty pounds. Um takes great photos, it's got an F three point five Zuiko uh, lens um, and you can go on Instagram or Flickr or whatever and see example photos but um, I'm going to put that in the A tier I think it's great, absolutely brilliant for street photography it's a pocketable camera and I absolutely love shooting with it and I do miss it um, so then we'll go on to the Olympus XA which I have got here here we go, here it is I found it um, again, it's a brilliant camera. It's got a great lens. However, I did find it a little bit tricky when it came to um, street shooting, which is what I mainly do. And with the rangefinder, it was a little bit difficult to focus. Focus. However, saying that, I absolutely miss this camera so much, and um, I'm going to put it in the A tier along with the Olympus XA2. I just think. The photo when I got great photos from this camera, I I was really impressed and I miss it and I want it again. But it's going for so much more than what I bought them for a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure if I can warrant it or not. And maybe I will, maybe I won't. Who knows? But we'll find out in the future. <laughs> um, okay, so there's the XA and there's other XAs, XA3 and XA4, but those are the main two that if you're looking for a camera that you're going to be considering. Um, so what should we go to now? There's a lot of cannons here. Um, should we get them out of the way? So we've got this one here. This is the AF1. And and it is a bit of a small picture. I just nabbed it from Google Images. Um, however, it's a camera with a F2.8 lens. Um, however, it is fully automatic. And... Um, It's, a, it's got a great lens, but it's fully automatic. It's kind of chunky, very plastically. I think it came out in the either the very start of the 90s or the 80s. So it has got not so advanced features. However, it, it I mean, if you're new to point and shoots and you know that you're looking for the abstract flash field, then this would be a great camera. I think I'm going to... And it's incredibly affordable as well. I'm, I think I'll put it in the... Uh, B tier and I think this B tier is going to get quite populated um, because I think it's enough I think the, the thing that carries it is its quality for price and, and that's really it really um, and then we've got this here the Canon Sure Shot Max and I found this camera in a charity shop and I knew that it was good I put it in the B tier already I should have discussed but I knew that it was good it's got a F I think 3.5 lens um, and it's like an F38 38 millimeter, which is a bit different than normally 35 millimeter angle on the lens. Um, but again, it's cheap. It's got a great quality lens. And I think point and shoots are meant to be cheap. They're meant to be, you get getting, and it's all about trying to get the best value for your, 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 Bet the best quality images for your cheapest pound because I mean I was a student I'm not anymore but I was a student and I know what it's like to be on a budget and I, and I know what it's like to want to have these experiences but 
you can't because of your financial situation. So being able to get a great quality image for the most affordable price was something that really, really mattered to me for a long period of time. So I think when I take a look at the point and shoot market, that's really what is at the forefront of my mind when buying uh, one of these cameras. Um, let's look here. Now, I can't remember what this camera is called. It's, I think it's the Canon ML30 or something like that. But I did have it for a very, very short period of time because I think it has an F1.9 lens or something crazy like that. Um, so it is like the shallowest depth of field on a point and shoot that you can get. However, it is just so chunky and it's so loud and you just can't use it. Um, I don't think I actually ever got any photos from it because I just thought this camera is so loud. I need to get rid of it because it's... Uh, uh, but I've looked at images and they are all right, but I just don't think that it warrants its price or... Um, I mean, it's got good images, but I have to put it in the D tier purely because it's just a pretty much an unused camera um, for the point and shoot market. Um, what other cannons we got here? That's an Olympus. Have we got any other cannons? Um, no, let's go to the Olympus now. Um, so this is an Olympus AF10. It's, it's not just I think it's not just an AF10 I think it's an AF10 oh no no I've missed off one here the Canon's Sure Shot Supreme that's going to go in the B tier as well great lens I think it's f2.8 um, affordable price the only thing that holds this down you've got a neck strap which is a bit different but it's a little bit chunky so you do have to wear it around your neck unfortunately but yeah these cameras here are all affordable and they've all got they've got great lenses and they're cheap um, the same with the Olympus A. I think that's, I've got it open here on the tab so I can see it. It's the Olympus AF10 Super. Um, F 3.5 lens, Suico lens. Again, cheap camera, but great quality images. And I think when you can get that ratio between price and quality, then you really are on for a winner in the point and shoot market. Um, those These cameras are all about, 30 pounds 20 to 30 pounds from what i can recall now this is the panasonic 635 af or something crazy like that but it's also what's called the uh, i think it's it's a like it's a like it's got like a lens like a mini 2 or something along those lines um yeah i mean this is a little bit more expensive about 70 pounds i think it's going for um but it takes great photos and it's got that Leica lens on it, which is a bit different. It's a bit of a curveball because if you rocked around with a Panasonic AS635 AF, people aren't going to know that's a Leica lens, but you're going to be able to bamboozle those bean, beanos or whatever the hell I'm saying. But um, yeah, so I'm going to put that in A tier purely for quality. And now this is another curveball here. And I'm going to put that, oh, not in the C tier, in the A tier as well. That is my current camera that I have. And that I haven't made a video about it. It's a bit of an obscure one. I don't think, I think it's, it warrants a place for me to talk about it here, but not in a fully fledged video, I don't think. And that is the Panasonic 355, 3, no, 535 AF. It's got an f3.5 lens and it's incredibly pocketable. It's got a round the neck strap, really small. You can take, it is automatic, but you can take a photo, hold the shutter down, walk away, and then the, sh the film will advance, which is a really, really nice feature. You've got a f3.5 lens, which is, you know, in the point and shoot, 35 millimeter and uh, focal length. So uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a really good camera. Uh, I mean, the images aren't as sharp as something like the Olympus XA, but for I really enjoy a built-in flash. And for your general day-to-day point-and-shoot uh, needs, it's probably, for the price, well, I think it's, it's incredibly cheap. You can get it for these four and then this one here. Uh, for your fun point-and-shoots, you can't really go wrong there. Um, then we've got this Minolta... Uh, AFZ, I think it is, camera. 
Um, and this is going to probably one of the last of the cheapest ones. Again, I think it's going to be a B. It's got an f 2.8 lens, so great quality. It's just chunky. It's just plasticky. Uh, powered on, I think, four AA batteries. But, um, I mean, it is really your own personal preference. Uh, so let's go to the Konica A4. I think straight away that's an A tier. Great lens uh, i think the big mini is a bit of a better build quality uh really enjoyed this camera um i gave it to a friend and she absolutely loved it so that is you can watch my video on that as well um but yeah that's a, again it's i really enjoy i love talking about point and shoots because there's some gems out there that you can get for an affordable price and if you can get more people to be playing around with film photography uh, enjoying it, shooting it in their own free time, in their party time, whatever you want to call it, um, then you can't really go wrong, can you? Um, let's go for the Yish... No, let's leave these Yashikas for last. So we've got the Minux... I think this is the Minux ML... I really can't remember... It's Minux ML30 or something crazy like that. It's a point and shoot that has got incredible control. You can set the aperture ring. Like it's got an actual aperture, aperture ring dial on the camera, which is crazy, I find. Um, however, I mean, and it's very possible. The lens, you open the front of the camera and the lens protrudes out. Um, but it's all, all manual, so it's very similar to the Olympus XA and XA2. However, it's completely zone focusing, so you really do have to. Um, is zone focusing the right word? I think it is. Um, you have no idea. You have to guess guess how far away your subject is, and if you're looking for street shooting, it's, there's a very small amount of use cases where you can do that. And those kind of photos where it's quite still, not much is going on. I find those kind of photos a bit boring. So, in my opinion, it's going to go in the C. Um, same with the Rode 35, it's got an incredible lens, really sharp Zeiss lens as well, um, but again you have to zone focus, so it's really not got much of a use case for me. Um, now we're on to the big boys, the contacts and the Yashikas. Um, I could rattle through this, we know how much they are, we know how much they are, but they are brilliant. Um, so I think I probably might just rattle through this. Shishika T3 is huge. It's expensive. Um, this lens is all right. I've owned this camera, but it just couldn't bloody fit in my pocket. It looked like I had a bloody rocket in my pocket. It was just too big. It did have the super scope, but again, um, just couldn't really use it unless you had it around your neck all the time, something like that. Yashika T4 and Yashika T5. Um, now I disagree if you've watched negative feedback video George I disagree I think the Yashika T4 is an A and I think the Yashika T5 is a S tier um, it is my favourite camera ever that I've used uh, I've had a video on it it takes absolutely wonderful photos um, it has a super scope as well which I think is useful for shooting uh, at waist level as if you've got a waist level viewfinder and I think if you've got the money and it's working and it's what you want then absolutely go for it because it is a wonderful camera but then like although I've put that as S tier please 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 don't disregard any of the cheaper options that I've put there I think they are absolutely wonderful cameras as well and it is really depends on what you're up to um, the Contax T2, it's just a great camera, but it's so overpriced. I think, ooh, I think I have to put that in C tier, probably because it's similar to like the Olympus Mi 2. We know it's a great camera, but it's big, it's chunky, it's cold as well, it's metal, so it's going to be cold. They can break, and if they break, you've got a brick, very expensive brick. Um, and the Contax T3 probably a I mean I've not used either of these cameras but the context t3 is a very smaller more compact version you can put it in your pocket a bit better than the t2 and both of these take wonderful wonderful photos but you really do have to have a lot of money to uh, invest in those um, so I think this is really fair I think there's plenty of cameras out there um, that could have been here 
um, and you know you can let me know and we can have a discussion about that um, but I hope that this shows to you that you don't have to have all the money in the world to be able to have a great camera um, and perhaps this might give you a bit of inspiration to go and look at some others that you might not have thought about before um, so I hope you enjoyed this video it was a bit different I didn't actually have a camera in my hand I just kind of spouted my fountain of knowledge onto you the said the viewer um, I may not have made eye contact that because I was looking at my laptop maybe I won't even include the video in but maybe it'll be in a small corner but we can just discuss and have a great day and I hope that you got something out of this video and that's all that I really want so thank you very much for watching and take care goodbye bless bless no that's not right bye <laughs>